I'm gonna kind of go through, my name is Brooke, by the way. Um, I am the owner and lead planner at Pink With Envy Events, and that is my fabulous team for which I could not do what I do without them. And I have been in business for 15 years here in Dayton. I'm one of the longest running planners um, in this area and pretty much on every preferred list in the area. Thank you. Um, so, but I take pride in that because we've worked really, really hard to take care of our hundreds of um, couples that we've worked with over the years. So I'm gonna kind of go through some general planning tips and then kind of complement them with planning tips here at the bright side. Why hire a wedding planner? So I love these images and I think they really capture that feeling of what a planner can provide you. It is that peace of mind. How many of you wanna work on your wedding day? That's what I thought. Um, so by hiring someone like me, even as a wedding day management coordinator, we help alleviate that so that all the time and money that you've invested in your event, you can actually enjoy the fruits of your labor that day. And you can get more moments like this where mom is just so excited to be in the moment and is not running around setting up your event um, or your best friend or your aunt or your maid of honor or whomever. It lets your friends and family enjoy. And the big thing you'll kind of theme that you'll hear me talk about a lot too is time value of money today. So you will really start, you know, those, tell me again who's just starting. Okay, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna make it all. I can do it. It's gonna be so good. And then by the time you get to like the sixth, whatever, you're like, what the hell did I sign up for? Why am I doing this? And so you'll really start to evaluate okay, what are the things that I can do, my family, my friends, wedding party, whatever, and what are the things I really should hire a professional for? And so as a wedding coordinator, we can kind of ask you the right questions to guide you down that road of how to make that action plan. The other thing is connections and vendor recommendations. So I ask a lot of fact-finding questions in the beginning to get to know you, and a lot of times I can cut down on that time of you trying to figure out who's the right fit for you. So I'll ask for your Pinterest board, inspo images. I'll ask you questions about you as a couple, your family. Um, one of my favorite questions to ask is, when your wedding's over, and it's a couple weeks now, or even a year from now, your first anniversary, what do you want people to still say about your event when they see you the next time? You know, what do you hope they experience? I'm very much about the five senses. Um, when people come to an event that I help create, you know, what are they smelling? What are they seeing? What are they tasting? Um, all of that kind of stuff. And so I love to hear those answers about, you know, what do you hope your guests are saying, you know, years from now as you continue on your journey? And like I said, peace of mind. Sometimes it's hard to quantify exactly what a planner does because you can't taste my cake. You can't visit my venue. Um, I can show you photos, but I didn't always take them. Um, and so it really is that knowledge, that intellectual property, that peace of mind, that work on the day of so that you can be present, that really is where our value comes in. The difference between a planner and a venue coordinator, I will die on this hill, just so you know. It will be on my gravestone, the difference between these two things. And actually, really great venue coordinators will agree with me. Um, if you are looking at any other venues and they tell you, oh, your planner is included, run, because it is not. And if they are happen to have a partnership, just know that there probably will be an additional fee for that um, to have that included in your venue rent, um, rental. So a planner advocates for you holistically. We've got a pulse on everything that is happening with you. Your venue coordinator just like any of your other vendors, is there to deliver what the venue promised you, okay? So at the end of the day, and no offense to them, they're gonna advocate for their venue. They're gonna make sure things are running smoothly here first, and, and they're not gonna be able to be there to give you those extra touches that you need on that day of. So that's kind of like the biggest difference. And that's one big question I get a lot too when I'm at these kind of things. They're like, oh, well, my venue said they have a person. I was like, no, no, they do not. Come here, we need to talk. So, um, and whether that's me or somebody else that you vibed with, I highly encourage you to get two people that are willing to work together from the venue side and on behalf of you as a whole. Different levels of planning. So I personally, and I know a lot of in other planners in the area, like to do an initial complimentary consultation to get to know you. Every quote that I give is specified to that couple because each of you is different. So what might be important to you all, they could care less about. What is 
what you want to spend money on is not something you want to spend money on. And so that equates to different levels of work that we're going to have to put into that event to make whatever your vision is come alive. But if I had to kind of generally quantify and probably language and terminology that you hear, if you're on the not or online or on Google or whatever, it's probably these three levels of service. So starting with full service, and don't come at me, that's not like the full list of everything that's listed on those things, but this just gives you an idea, um, is literally start to finish. Um, that is usually for the person who either works a lot, they might, I get a lot of couples that don't live here, they might have been from here, but they live somewhere else, um, or someone who gets overwhelmed easily and they're like, I need someone with an objective opinion to make some decisions for me. And that includes a lot more hand-holding, um, attending almost all the appointments, budget management, design concepts, um, you name it, it's pretty much going to include all of that. The partial, I'll be honest, is kind of where a lot of people fall, where you're pretty with it. I mean, my job isn't rocket science, but it is a science in itself. Um, and you can get some things together, but we work collaboratively. So a lot of times when we meet, I'm going to have homework, you're going to have homework. That's kind of how it's going to work. But we're at least on the same track, and you're going to have an endpoint in sight and an end goal in sight. So attending some appointments, timeline creation, those types of things. Uh, the last one I like to call wedding day management. There's another hill I will die on too, so that'll be the second thing on my tombstone, is if you hear day of coordinator, um, I don't like that term because it has a certain connotation and I'll tell you why. Is I don't care what you do for a living, you cannot come in the day of with no pre-work and be expected to be super successful and especially execute an event. And so a lot of times people don't understand, well, if you're just day of, why do I have to pay for this? Or what, what does that really include? You're just, you know, come in day of. A lot of time that day of work starts a couple months out because we still have to make contacts with your vendors, create your timeline, um, do all of those things and come up with a plan for that day and keep everyone on the same page. So it's not something that's like the week before we're like, hey, my name's Brooke, how's it going? I'll be at your wedding. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. So that kind of gives you a different, or just like a breakdown of kind of how most planners will kind of compartmentalize the services that they offer. Now I'm gonna talk about some mistakes to avoid. Just some helpful hints in general. First one, obviously not using the bright side planning document and all of those resources she just showed you. They were not lying when they said this, this is the only venue that really offers that to their clients. And I think it's really awesome. It makes my life a little easier. Um, and it makes it easier to communicate with you when you have questions too. Um, not being organized. If that is not your strong suit, let's chat. Because you are going to go down some rabbit holes and you're not going to have a fun experience. That's the other thing. People come in with positivity about planning and then they get completely overwhelmed. And the worst thing anyone can say is, God, I can't wait till this is over. And I'm like, you've just spent how much money? you spent how much time? You are marrying your best friend, whoever said that. You know, tell me you can't wait for it to be over. That's a damn shame, okay? So we're gonna get you organized. Not having tools for the day. So when you come here and if you don't have someone like me who carries an emergency kit, you better make sure you have tape, scissors, zip ties, lighters for your candles, batteries, safety pins, tide pens, all the pens, anything like that So um, that you need. I kind of touched on this before, not assessing what can be DIY'd versus who, when to hire a professional. So I, you could look at Sean and be like, well, I got an iPod or Apple Music. Well, that's not the same as having Sean and Brandon there to MC, keep the flow going, keep the vibe going, assess the crowd. Like anyone can make a Spotify playlist, yeah, but you're not going to get what they offer, okay? Um, the same thing is with centerpieces. I get people like, I found a deal. I'm going to buy all these things off Facebook Marketplace. Please don't do that. <laughs> um, some things, okay, okay. But when you work with someone like me, you may be able to rent those things for a similar or less cost, and then you don't have to leave them in your basement for months or years after your event has happened. Again, not evaluating the time value of money. We've kind of talked about that. But your time is going to start to become more and more valuable the closer you get to your wedding. And you'll be surprised what you'll be like, just take my kidney. I just, just do it. I don't want to do it. 
um, when you get that close. But having someone to chat with to kind of get you through that process makes it a lot easier. And then, of course, the other thing is not fully understanding the time that it's going to take you to load the stuff in, to set the stuff up, to distribute it in the venue where it needs to go, to then um, decorate, tear it down, pack it back up, get it back out. Everything that comes in that day, it's got to go right back out that day. And so by the time you get to the end of your wedding, you've just had a great time. You've probably a couple drinks in, and then people are like, here's your crap. Have a nice night. You don't want to deal with that. You don't want to do that. Not understanding how to create a timeline. You have got to bring all of those vendors together to make sure that they're on the same page. Because some things that could happen is you can't have people releasing for dinner if the food's not out, or if you're behind and your food gets cold, or your photographer runs out of time that you've paid them for and you don't get the shots that you want. Um, most people are ready to just get to the open dancing. At that point, they're like, I've cut the cake, I did the things, all the things. I just want to hang out with my friends. I just want to put my songs on and I want to have a good time. You shorten that time the more time that you waste to do that. So the timeline and run of show of that day is really super important. The other thing that people forget is not having, I call it an exit strategy, for your special day, um, it is just as important as the setup and teardown. So like I said, you've just had a great day, your couple drinks in, nobody wants to clean up their wedding in their wedding dress or right after they got done with all of that. So having people, when having it organized to begin with helps us put all the things back, but then also who's taking it, what car is it going in, how's it getting back, uh, packed back up. If you rented things, who's coming to get those things again? Coordinating that with the venue. There's a whole slew of things that have to happen um, in order to make, to end the day, close out the shift, if you will, um, to make that happen. And the other biggest thing that people always forget about, and I crack up when I ask that question, is, okay, at the end of the night, how are you getting where you're going at the end of the night? And they're like, oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> um, I'm like, how are you getting to the hotel or to you know, your home or to the next stop if you're going bar hopping. And if you look at me and tell me you're taking a lift, I'm going to smack you in the face <laughs> because I get so many people like, I'll just get an Uber. I'm like, I'm not putting you in an Uber in your wedding dress and praying you get where you're going. Um, I've had a couple of people like, oh, we're just going to walk to the Oregon. I'm like, the hell you are. I'm not letting that happen. So we got to figure that out. So that exit strategy is just as important as that load in and setup strategy. Just to circle back, why you should hire someone like me is peace of mind. Oh, sometimes I'm cute, right? I don't know. I do things. But peace of mind on the, your special day. It's knowing that everything's getting handled. It's knowing that mom, best friend, whomever actually gets to be there with you and doesn't have to do anything. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Let me know if you have any questions.